Matt Jesus on a pilgrimage, still walking. I'm Andy Doyle, the Bishop of Texas, and that's my six-word autobiography. My hope for this podcast is to walk with you and talk with you about God, the church, and where we're headed next. Heavenly Father, as I offer these words uh, this morning, I beseech you to see before you a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, and a sinner of your own redeeming. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Good morning. morning. uh, This morning I came to remind you of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. Something you probably have heard before, my brothers and sisters. But I've come to encourage you, says Paul, and to remind you of the gospel you believe in. Now, that sounded really good to me on Monday. I was like, yes, yes, Paul, give it to me. And then I got to the third paragraph of the gospel, page five of your leaflet, and Mary stood weeping. She stood weeping outside the tomb. Man, this is good news, Mary. Why are you weeping? And then I thought to myself, I've been there. I've been there. I wondered if you had been there. I wonder how many of you have had a rough week this week. How many of you maybe have had a rough life. And I wonder, did you come today having worked hard? I know some of us are not here because they're working. Perhaps you have needed some help for a long time. Maybe you have lost someone that you love dearly. Maybe someone is hurting that you love. Maybe you're hurting. Let me tell you, on that day, in that moment, at that tomb, Mary was hurting, wasn't she? She was weeping for loss and pain for a rough week. Talk about a rough week. Mary had lost someone close. All right, still, you don't think it's on? I'm just being loud? How about now? There we go. You're going to wish that I had left it the other way. Mary had, I think, a broken soul on that day. A heart broken soul. And I read those words and I began to think about that song. Mary, don't you weep. Mary, don't you weep no more. Mary, don't you weep. Now those were words from Jesus to Mary of Bethany, Lazarus' sister, Hadn't Mary been there? Didn't she hear? Maybe she didn't know. Maybe she didn't know. Why are you weeping? The angels asked. Why are you weeping? Jesus asked. And I'm sitting there listening to the gospel words and thinking, Mary, don't you weep. Mary Mary had experienced her own journey to the grave, don't you know? Now think for a moment if you sat with Mary... Maybe you walked by. Maybe you walked with Mary that morning to the tomb. Maybe you today who sits here were there with Mary. Don't you think that if you told Mary your woes, that she would say, I've gone through the darkest valley and the valley of death myself, just like you. I've gone through hunger and deliverance, Mary might say to you. I have ridden stormy seas, like you, Mary might say. And I know your pain. And she would say, you know what the Lord said to me? Mary, don't you weep. Don't you weep no more. And so I'm here to remind you not to weep. It's okay. Or weep as much as you need to. But weep for joy. Weep for joy. 
I've seen the Lord, she would say. I have seen the Lord, and he has wiped away every tear. John the Revelator says, the risen Lord wipes away every tear. Death can't hound you no more. That's good news. Nothing more to mourn. That's good news. Nothing to cry for. That's good news. No more pain, because that old order is even now passing away because Christ is risen. Now, he is the rectifying, justifying God on your side, she might say. This God is for you. It's for you. Whether you've been to the church a lot or not, this God's for you. If you haven't been in a long time and decide to show up today and discover the bishop's preaching and wish maybe you'd wait until next Sunday. <laughs> this God is for you. If you've tried to follow Jesus, I bet there are those of you in this room who have tried to follow Jesus, but you believe you failed. This risen Lord's for you. Mary might say to us, if she had had the gift of listening to Jelly Roll, the country <laughs> singer, Jesus is better with the lost than the found, with the back road people who can't be found beneath your steeple. I've seen the Lord, Mary would say, and she did say, I've seen the risen Lord on his way to heaven, on his way to the Father, on his way he goes. Don't you cry no more. That's what she must have said when she got back to those men hiding from the powers that be. For the women were the first ones at the tomb. They are the first evangelists, aren't they? And they, she would have gone in there and said, what are you guys doing? Don't you weep no more. That's the message of God. He's risen and even now is going before you in your life. Going before you and is waiting to meet you. God's waiting to meet you on whatever broken road, as that country song says, that takes you down the way. Well, at this point, you're going to regret that I was listening to Mahalia Jackson and Whitney Houston and had them singing on a YouTube next to my sermon writing. <laughs> why should I feel discouraged? Why should the shadows come? But why should my heart feel lonely and long for heaven when Jesus is my portion, a constant friend? Oh, oh, his eye is on the sparrow. His eyes on you. His eyes on me. Don't you weep today on this Easter Sunday, for Jesus is risen, and you are not greater than these, says Matthew. And when Jesus' followers weep and cry out, when Jesus' followers are discouraged, does he not say to them in the gospel, You are greater than the sparrow, the bird of the air, and the lily of the field? God cares for them. Don't you think how much more God must care for you? Don't you weep no more. Be sure that God had done a great thing rising Jesus from the dead. A great thing is not that your life is going to be easier. Because in 2,000 years, we learned that's not true. <laughs> right? So anybody who promises you that believing in Jesus is going to make your life easier... They are lying. <laughs> if anything, it's going to make your life harder. Because you'll be yearning for the kingdom of heaven. You'll be yearning for God to put down the powers and principalities of this world. You'll be waiting for God to act. And you know, you know you are sent out there like Mary to do the work. His life in this world is hard. I don't know what they've been telling you. And we are more lost than found, more sinner than saint, more unrighteous than right. And our equality, our equality is based on Jesus' love despite all of the brokenness in this room. On the fact that God loves us 
and has done something more than we can ask or imagine, greater than solving our discouragement at the things of this world, for life in this world can be discouraging. But God has done something graver, greater than solving my hard times. Let me tell you what God has done. Let me tell you, like Mary must have said to those hiding disciples, what has happened, friends, what has happened in the act of resurrection, uh, resurrection is that the violence of this world will not have the last word. The evil in this world will not win. Goodness, love, hope. These are the things, Paul tells us, that endure. The brokenness of our lives, no matter how bad it is, will not be the end. St. Paul says there is nothing that is ever going to separate you from the love of God. No powers, no principalities, no hateful words, no despicable actions, no bullying, no policies, no politics, no discouragement. No, you do not have to cry anymore because none of that will have power over you in the last day. Jesus is the friend of sinner and the lover of souls. He has risen and trampled down death, something greater than maybe you hope for today. But I'll tell you on the last day, that's exactly what you want. On the last day, you want Jesus' hand reaching down and pulling you to the other side. Nothing else will matter on that day. Now, as Oris Lee Mays, the Reverend Oris Lee hey, Mays, wrote in a song, which is very catchy, don't let the devil ride because the next thing you know he's going to drive. <laughs> Now, I'm pretty sure that old Scratch, the prince of death, the devil himself, thought he was in the driver's seat on Good Friday. I wonder how often you think he's in the driver's seat of your life. Jesus hanging up there on the cross on Calvary. But he woke up on Holy Saturday to realize the devil himself had eternally been kicked out of the driver's seat. As St. Chrysostom says, hell took in a body and discovered God. Took earth and encountered heaven. Took what it saw and was overcome by what it did not see. O oh, death, Chrysostom saying, where is your sting? O oh, hell, where is your victory? Christ is risen and you, O death, are annihilated, he wrote. Christ is risen and evil is cast down. Angels rejoice. We are liberated forever. So there'll be no crying there. And that's the promise we're making for Callum today. On this baptismal day, we're committing that when he gets discouraged, we will raise him up and remind him of Jesus as friend has sent along a whole family of broken people. We're going to remind him that no matter how far he goes away, God will be there. And so will we. We're going to tell him that God loves him no matter what happens in his life. God loves him eternally. And he can never go too far. He can never walk so far that when he turns around, God isn't there with his arms open wide. Precious Lord, we might pray, take my hand on this Easter day. Take my hand and lead me on. Let me stand. I'm tired and I'm weak and I'm lone. Through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, and lead me home. 
Because I'm here to remind you today of some good news. Something you've heard before, but maybe not in this way. And that is Christ is risen. And you do not have to weep anymore. It's God's there. Sometimes carrying you, sometimes holding your hand, sometimes hugging, sometimes out in front of you casting away, and sometimes waiting for you to turn around. You are saved. And as Paul reminds us, we are being saved. Thank you for listening. Join me in conversation on Twitter at Texas Bishop and spread the word about this podcast by leaving a review on iTunes. Thank you.